This is grade 12 economics revision lesson provided by the Ministry of Education. Today we are going to revise unit 2 which is about theory of demand, supply and elasticity. Under this unit we are going to see three broad theories called theory of demand, theory of supply and elasticity. From the definition, demand is the amount of a product that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price during a specified period of time. Under the definition of demand, demand and quantity demanded are two different concepts. Demand refers to the relationship between price and quantity demanded, while the quantity demand refers to a specific amount of a commodity that buyers are willing and able to buy at a specific price. Now let's illustrate the theory of demand using the following schedule. This is the demand for orange by one household in one word up per week. Here from this schedule, when the price of a kilogram of orange is per 10, the quantity demanded for oranges for kilogram because the price is too cheap. And when the price increases from 10 to 20, then the quantity demanded for orange reduced from 4 kg to 3 kg. And finally, when the price reached to 30, then the quantity demanded for orange declined from 3 kg to 2 kg. From this, we can show that as price of a kilogram of orange increases, then the quantity demanded for orange will decline. And as price of a kilogram of orange decreases, then the quantity demanded for orange will increase. Now let's see the demand curve which is a graphical presentation of the demand schedule and just represent all the values of price in the y and all the values of the quantity demanded on the x to plot the demand curve and then from this we can show the relationship between the price of a commodity and quantity demanded. The slope of the demand curve is negative because there is an inverse relationship between the two variables that are entered in the x and y axis. That means as price of a kilogram of orange increases, then the quantity demanded for orange will decline. And as price of a kilogram of orange decreases, then the quantity demanded for orange will, inc will increase. So due to this inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, then the slope of the demand curve is always negative. Now let's see the market demand. The market demand is the sum of the individual demand. And the demand function shows a mathematical relationship between demand and other factors that affect demand, such as price, price of related good, income of consumer, test or preference, and the likes. These are all the factors that affect demand for a commodity. Let me show you the way of deriving the demand function from the given demand schedule. The first step to derive the demand function is calculating the slope of the demand function and the slope is mathematically calculated by dividing the vertical difference which is changing y over the horizontal difference which is changing x. This is y final minus y initial and the change in x is x final minus x initial. Now from this information, by taking any two coordinates, we can calculate the slope of the demand function. While we plot the demand curve, we represented the value of price in the y axis and all the values of quantity demanded in the x. Hence, we can take these values as y and these values as x. Now let's take this 10 as y initial and this 20 as y final. Let's take this 4 as x initial and this 3 as x final. Now when we substitute this information on this formula, the value of y final is 20 minus the value of y initial is 10 divided by the value of x final is 3 minus the value of x initial is 4. And this will give you 20 minus 10 is 10 over minus 1, which is minus 10. This is the slope of demand curve. Now, for a linear equation, which is represented in the form of y is equal to a x plus b, the coefficient of the variable x later a stands for the slope of a function. 
So from this we have y is equal to the slope is minus 10 y is equal to minus 10 x plus b. Now in order to get the y intercept you can take any coordinate from this information you can take 10 and 4 20 and 3 30 and 2 and other options from the given schedule so in order to get the y intercept b y equals to minus 10 x plus b and from this let's take the first coordinate take the value of y which is 10 and the value of x which is 4 so this will give you 10 which is equal to minus 10 time times the value of x is 4 and then plus b now let's rewrite this 10 which is equal to minus 10 times 4 is minus 40 plus b and then when we collect like terms together when we put this minus 40 to the left we get plus 40 which is equal to b now the y intercept is 50. now we have the y intercept we have the slope so we can construct the equation the equation is equal to y equals to minus 10 x plus 50. this is the equation for the normal information presented in this form as the value of y given in this form and the value of x given in this form but when we put into economics we represent the value of y as price and the value of x as quantity demanded hence this is minus 10 qd plus 50. actually this is the demand function but we have to put it in the form of quantity demanded equals to form so in order to put it into quantity demanded equals to form then we have to put this minus 10 qd to the left then we left with 10 qd which is equal to 50 and when we put this p to the right we get minus p minus p and when we divide both sides for 10 for 10 then we left with the quantity demanded which is equal to 5 minus 1 over 10 p this is our demand function but simply by watching we can identify the slope of the demand function from the given demand function how can we do it the slope of the demand function is the reciprocal of the coefficient of price the coefficient of price is minus 1 over 10 and the reciprocal of minus 1 over 10 is minus 10 so we can identify the slope of the demand function simply by watching from the given demand function and this is achieved by the slope of the demand function is the reciprocal of the coefficient of price this is important information for the calculation of the price elasticity of demand using the point formula now let's see the law of demand the law of demand states that other things remain unchanged as price of a product increases quantity demanded will decline and vice versa vice versa means the opposite holds true that means as price of a commodity decreases quantity demanded will increase for example this law is applied under preconditions or assumptions that means other things must remain unchanged if there's a change in other things this law is not applicable for example if you do have timber and if the price of an egg is tuber if you spend the whole timber for the purchase of egg you can buy five eggs but if you have timber again and if the price of egg increase from tuber to five then you will buy only two eggs so other things remain unchanged especially if your income remains unchanged with increase in price of egg from tuber to five then the quantity demanded for egg will decline from five to two but this holds true if there is no change in income of consumer that means if there's a change in income if there is a rise in income of consumer even though there is a rise in price of egg the quantity demanded for egg will also increase there are the basis of the law of demand that means these factors makes an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded that means 
as price of a commodity increases then quantity demanded for a commodity will decline and as price of a commodity declines then quantity demanded for a commodity will increase first of all the law of diminishing marginal utility is the cause for the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded the principle of diminishing marginal utility states that as we consume more and more of a commodity over a period then the total utility that we get from additional consumption of a commodity will decline if the additional satisfaction that we get from additional consumption of a commodity declines then with the rise in the price of a commodity people tend to decline their quantity demanded and the opposite holds true the other basis for the law of demand is substitution effect as price of a commodity increases people will substitute one commodity for another hence as price increases the quantity demanded for a commodity will decline the other is changing the number of consumers if there is a rise in the number of consumers then then the price of a commodity is expected to increase and with increase in price of a commodity quantity demanded will decline and the different use of a commodity also affects the law of demand there are exceptions to the law of demand these are violations or against the law of demand that means as price of a commodity increases then the quantity demanded for a commodity may not decline or it will increase and as price of a commodity decreases then the quantity demanded for a commodity will decline or it remains unchanged among these exceptions one of the exception is given good given goods are special type of inferior goods inferior goods are those goods as income of a consumer increases then the demand for the inferior goods will decline and with a fall in income of consumer uh, then the demand for inferior goods will also decline so these given goods are against against the law of demand that means with increase in price of given goods the quantity demanded for given good may increase or remains unchanged prestigious goods are against the law of demand that means as the price of prestigious goods increase then the demand for prestigious good will also increase as price of prestigious goods decline then the demand for prestigious goods will also decline necessities are against the law of demand necessities are those commodities which are essential for survival as price of necessities increases then the quantity demanded for necessities will not decline now let's rise to the determinants of demand we are going to classify the determinants of demand into two called the own price determinant of demand and the non own price determinant of demand the own price determinant of demand also called change in quantity demanded is caused by the change in price of a commodity the single factor that makes a change in quantity demanded is change in price of a commodity only and with the change in the price of a commodity there is a movement along a fixed demand curve for example as price of a kilogram of orange increase from 10 to 20 then the quantity demanded for orange declined from 4 to 3 kg as price increases from 20 to 30 then quantity demanded also declines from 3 to 2 this is a movement from point a to point b and from point b to point c the opposite holds true that means as price of a kilogram of orange decreases from 30 to 20 then quantity demanded increase from 2 to 3 is a movement from point C to point B and when the price declines from 20 to 10 then the quantity demanded for orange increase from 3 to 4 is a movement from point B to point A so with a change in the price of a commodity from one price to another so the only factor that makes a movement along a fixed demand curve is change in price of a commodity with a change in the price of a commodity there is no shift in the demand curve rather it makes a movement along the demand curve now let's see the non-own price determinant of demand these 
are those factors that shift the demand curve from its entire position. These factors are also called changing demand and it is called by changing other factors other than price of a commodity. The change in quantity demanded is caused by the change in price of a commodity but the change in demand is caused by changing other factors other than price of a commodity. And these factors, these factors, factors other than price of a commodity shifts the demand curve from its entire position either to the left or to the right. Any factor that increases demand for a commodity will shift the demand curve to the right and any factor that decreases demand for a commodity will shift the demand curve to the left. Now, let's see these factors that shift the demand curve either to the left or to the right. First of all, in terms of income of consumers, we can classify goods into two called normal goods and inferior goods. Normal goods are those goods whose income effect is positive. That means as income of a consumer increases, then the demand for normal goods will increase. And as income of a consumer declines, then the demand for normal goods will decline. So there is a direct relationship between the changes in the direction of normal goods and the demand for normal goods. Inferior goods are those goods whose income effect is negative. That means as income of a consumer increases, then the demand for inferior goods will decline. And as income of a consumer declines, then the demand for inferior goods will increase. So there is an inverse relationship between the changes in the direction of inferior goods and the demand for inferior goods. Now let's see the price of related goods. In terms of price of related goods, we are going to classify goods into two called substitutes and complements. Substitutes are those goods which can be used one in place of another. For example, coffee and tea are substitutes. In the absence of coffee, consumers of coffee can substitute coffee with tea. And in the absence of tea, consumers of tea can substitute tea with coffee. In economics, we can identify whether goods are substitutes or not using this information. If two goods are substitutes, the price of one product and the demand for the other are directly related. That means as price of commodity X increases, then the demand for commodity Y will also increase. And with the fall in the price of commodity X, then the demand for commodity Y will decline. That means if a rise in the price of one of the commodity decreases the demand for the other, no. If a rise in the price of one of the commodity increases the demand for the other, and a fall in the price of one of the commodity decreases the demand for the other, then the two goods are considered as substitutes. For example, Pepsi and Coca-Cola are substitutes. Now, the price of the price of Pepsi is fiber and the price of Coca is fiber. If the price of Coca remains unchanged, which is fiber, now if there are if there is a rise in the price of Pepsi only, if Pepsi increases from fiber to fifty bar, now consumers of Pepsi will shift their consumption of Pepsi to consumption of coca. Then what would happen to the coca, the demand for coca? The demand for coca will increase. So if the price of coca remains unchanged with increase in price of Pepsi, then the demand for coca will also increase. Similarly, Pepsi and coca are substitutes. Now, as the price of Pepsi declines, then the demand for coca will also decline. For example, if the price of Pepsi is bar 5 and the price of coca is bar 5, the price of coca remains unchanged and the price of Pepsi declined from 5 bar to 1, then consumers of coca will shift their consumption of coca to consumption of Pepsi. In this case, the demand for coca will decline. Another example for substitutes is injera and bread. If injera and bread are substitutes, a rise in the price of injera will increase the demand for bread 
and the fall in the price of injera will decline the demand for bread. In contrast, complements are those goods which can be used together. For example, automobile and petroleum are complements. In economics, we can consider two goods are complements if a rise in the price of one of the commodity declines the demand for the other and a fall in the price of one of the commodity increases the demand for the other, then the two goods are complements. If two goods are complements, the price of one product and the demand for the other are inversely related. That means a rise in the price of X will always decline the demand for Y and a fall in the price of X will always increase the demand for Y. So there is an inverse relationship between the price of one of the commodity and the demand for the other. Another non-own price determinant of demand is taste or preference. If there is good taste or preference, then the demand for a good will increase. And if there is bad taste or preference, then the demand for a good will decline. So good taste increases demand for a commodity and shifts the demand curve to the right. And bad taste decreases demand for a commodity and shifts the demand curve to the left. Another determinant is the number of buyers. With increase in the number of buyers, then the demand for a commodity will increase. And with a decline in the number of buyers, then the demand for a commodity will decline. Another determinant is future price expectation. If you expect higher prices in the near future, then you will buy more of a commodity as now. And if you expect lower prices in the near future, then you will buy less of a commodity as now. So there is a direct relationship between the changes in the direction of future price expectation and the demand for a commodity. Similarly, if you expect higher income in the near future, then the demand for a commodity will increase. And if you expect lower income in the future, then the demand for a commodity will decline. Again, there is a direct relationship between the changes in the direction of future income expectation and the demand for a good. Climate is another determinant. If there is good climate, then the demand for a commodity will increase. And with bad climate condition, then the demand for a commodity will decline. Students, this is all about the first revision lesson of Unit 2. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you.